Passover lamb. And uh, on this particular day, he chose to ride into Jerusalem where he was on display. Amen. <laughs> so uh, uh, let's begin reading in verse 1. Now when they drew near Jerusalem and came to Beth Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a coat with her. Loose them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord has need of them, and immediately uh, he will send them. Now this might seem kind of uh, 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 coarse, uh, you know, demand, just go in and say, give me this uh, foal and, uh, and th this uh, donkey and this coat. But actually, when we study the customs of the people, it had been a long-standing custom among the people of Israel that if, if a political leader or a religious leader was coming into town that it, and needed uh, an animal to ride upon, uh, it was customary for the person if he was requested to provide the animal to release the animal for their use. So this was not a commandeering type uh, thing that was being done here. It was something being done that fit with the customs uh, of the people at that time. But you'd also notice that uh, this was a donkey tied and a colt. And so Jesus rode on the colt, but the, the uh, mother of the colt came in uh, with Jesus as he rode on the coat. And, you know, that was apparent. The parent of the coat came in with the Lord riding on the uh, coat. And that tells me that Jesus wanted us to know that his parent, Father God, was with him when he rode into Jerusalem that day. And then uh, in another, uh, uh, in Luke, for example... Uh, in his uh, account of this, he added that this colt had never been ridden before. And this shows you the authority that our Lord has over nature itself. Because, you know, a colt that has never been ridden, it hasn't been broken and is uh, wild. But Jesus, being who he is, the Lord of lords and the King of kings, the creator of heaven and earth, he was able to ride on this uh, coat without any problem at all because of his power over nature. Can you imagine how many ribbons he would win at the Houston Rodeo <laughs> if he were participating <laughs> because the bulls or whatever he would ride on would become docile and uh, calm because he is the creator and has power over nature itself. And he says, you know, he says, the Lord has need of them. And you know, we need to remember that too. When, whenever the Lord wants something that belongs to us, uh, then uh, we, we need to uh, uh, provide it for Him. That's why it's good to be givers, and that's why it's good to give Him of our time. And when He tells us to do something, we ought to do it. If He has need of our services, then we ought to be like that person that uh, owned the uh, colt and the donkey, and we ought to be willing to say, Yes, Lord, whatever I have, belongs to you and it's for your use and that's just a good way to live we ought to live to give and consider everything that we have as belonging to Jesus Christ and we ought to look on ourselves as merely being stewards over the things that God has placed in our hands let's go on to verse 4 all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet and he quotes out of Zechariah chapter 9 Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you lowly and sitting on a donkey, a coat, the foal of a donkey. So the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. They brought the donkey and the coat, laid their clothes on them, and set him on them. And a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches. We know uh, from uh, John's account of this that those were palm branches that were cut down. And uh, they spread them on the road. Then the multitudes who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
And when he had come to Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? So the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth. And uh, let, let me just say uh, this about him coming in, riding on that uh, colt, on that uh, uh, donkey, that when we look in the Old Testament, when kings or judges would ride into a city uh, on a donkey, that meant that they were coming on a mission of peace and were coming with justice and mercy. When a king was coming in to conquer, when he was on a mission of war, he rode on a horse. And so we see when Jesus rode into Jerusalem this day, he came in uh, on a donkey, but when we read over in the, in, near the end of Revelation, when he comes back at the second advent, at the end of the tribulation period, he will be riding on a white horse and he will conquer all the enemies of Israel and the Antichrist and he will rule and reign on the earth for a thousand years. So he will, uh, he will we will see him coming again on a white horse. But on this particular uh, entrance into Jerusalem, he was riding on a donkey, meaning that he was on a mission of peace and on a mission of justice and a mission of mercy. Can you say uh, amen to that? Amen. Palm branches were uh, represented the tribe of Judah. And so when they were cutting down the palm branches, uh, that meant that they were acknowledging him as the king of their nation riding in. Now, obviously, they were looking at this time for a conquering Messiah to deliver them from the tyranny of Rome, but that was not the mission that Jesus was coming on on this particular day. He was coming on a mission of mercy and grace to liberate us from our sins and to set us free from our sins and to liberate us in our hearts. Yes. Amen. Amen. Starting with the, with the Israelites and then spreading to the uh, uh, Gentiles. And so uh, we know that they were looking at him to come on a, uh, a mission to liberate them from Roman tyranny because this reminds us, for example, of, of what the people did when Judas Maccabeus, uh, after he had uh, led an army to recapture the temple from the Syrians, when he rode into town during the uh, Feast of Tabernacles, the people did the same thing. They spread the uh, palm branches on the road and they put their clothes uh, on the road and on the, the, you know, the saddle and uh, uh, Maccabeus rode in as a conquering hero. But Jesus came this time conquering us, conquering sin from our lives and delivering us from the dominion of sin on a different type of conquering uh, mission. Yes. On this particular mission, he knew that he was, he was coming in humbly to humble himself and to be crucified on a cross in order to uh, give us victory over Satan. Because the Bible says that when he uh, took our sins upon himself on that cross, that he triumphed over Satan and demon powers in it, meaning the works that he was going to do, that he did on the cross at Calvary. So this was his mission on this particular entry into Jerusalem. Amen. Amen. Somebody get excited about this. Well, we know that uh, another reason we know that the people were recognizing him as the Messiah was because when you look at the Old Testament, when someone would be anointed king, for example, when Jehu uh, was anointed king by the prophet Elisha, the uh, people, they put the clothes on the saddle and they put the... the uh, uh, clothes on the road that was like rolling out the red carpet for the new king and so they did the same thing for example when Jehu was anointed king and so they were recognizing Jesus as the Messiah king and he is the king of Israel amen he's the king of kings and the Lord of Lords hallelujah let's give Jesus a hand clap amen but on this first entrance, uh, he came lowly in a mission of humility, humbling himself to the point where he died for our sins on the cross. And it was his love for us 
that drove him to the cross. It wasn't the nails that held him on the cross. It was the glue of his love for us that held him on the cross because he was taking the judgment and the punishment for our sins when he went to that cross. He was taking our place on the cross. Uh, thank God that he did. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. They said, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And that word Hosanna meant save now, deliver us now. And of course, again, they were looking for deliverance from the uh, Roman Empire. But he came on a greater mission than that to deliver us from our sins. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. He was more than merely a conquering king. He came to liberate all of mankind, all who would receive him. That was his mission, starting uh, with the nation of Israel. Amen. I think of over in John right after this, the, they came to Jesus, his disciples, and they said, the Greeks are wanting to visit with you. <laughs> Jesus he, he said he knew it was time. And uh, he had been ministering to the uh, Jewish people, to the nation of Israel. But he knew that, uh, it, that his mission was to them, but it would spread to the entire world. They were the nation chosen for him to come through. And he was of the tribe of Judah. And so uh, uh, they said... The, the Greeks want to speak to you. And he said, except a seed dies and falls to the ground, it won't bear any fruit. But if it dies and falls to the ground, it will bear much fruit. And he was speaking of what he was about to accomplish on the cross at Calvary by giving his life for all of us, for all humanity. And if you have a, a diamond in one hand and a grain of, say a fairly large diamond in one hand, one of those perfect, that flawless diamonds. And you had a grain of corn in the other hand, and someone asked you, which one would you like to have? Most people say, I want that diamond, because that diamond would be worth thousands and thousands of dollars. And the grain of corn, you know, is just a grain of corn. But if you were to take the diamond and plant it, put it in the ground, and leave it there, and you were to take the, seed, the grain of corn and put it in the ground and plant it, an average corn stalk would yield at least four ears of corn. And at the end of the first uh, season, harvest, you would take the four ears of corn and then plant all of that corn uh, in the ground. You would have many more stalks of corn coming up at the next harvest with uh, hundreds, already hundreds of grains of corn. Corn. Now, if you were to do this for a thousand years and not eat any of the corn, but just keep planting the seed, you would have enough corn that would fill the whole earth with corn. And, and, but if you dug up the diamond, it would still be worth in today's money thousands of dollars. But the value of the corn that you would have at the end of a, a thousand years would be worth trillions of dollars. And so uh, this is the, the wisdom of God in His plan of salvation for man. He came as a seed to die for our sins so that the harvest of the earth could be reaped. And I believe we'll see billions of believers with us in heaven. Can you say amen? amen? And can you thank God for His wisdom and for His mercy and for His justice? Glory to God. Let's give Jesus a hand clap. Amen. You know, I think of how He came in as the uh, Passover lamb and I think of this donkey that He rode on that had never been ridden before and it kind of reminded me of the red heifer in the Old Testament in a way because that red heifer was uh, 
without flaw. Jesus never sinned. And how that red heifer never, had never, it had to be one that had never had a yoke put on it. And it's interesting, he rode on a donkey that had never been ridden. And he is the king of kings, the Lord of laws, uh, the Lord of lords, uh, who never sinned, who committed no sin, not even one little sin. He went to the cross not for his sins, but for our sins. Yeah. And he is the Passover lamb of God. You know that Passover lamb, uh, you know, uh, it, it was a very special lamb that the people would uh, raise for this sacrifice. And uh, that Passover lamb prefigured the uh, lamb of God without spot and without blemish who went to the cross for our sins. Well, let's bow our heads and I'm not I'm preaching a long message. That concludes my message for this morning. But I want to give everyone here within, that's here in the church and all those within the hearing of my voice that are watching by internet, we thank God for you. We welcome you to this special Palm Sunday service and you're a very important part of this congregation. And I'd like to ask everyone here to look within your hearts and ask yourself this question. Have I really accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior? Have I truly repented of my sins? That means turning away from the way of the world and turning to Jesus and inviting Him into my heart to be my personal Lord and Savior. Have I really done that with uh, the sincerity and conviction of faith? And if you're saying within yourself, you know, I'm not sure I have really made that heart meant surrender to Jesus Christ and accepted Him as my Messiah, my Deliverer, my King, my Lord, my Savior. You can do so today. God is not limited by our weaknesses. He's not limited by the sin in our life. He'll receive us all just the way we are. All He requires of us is a decision. And the only way we can limit God is by the decisions that we make. But when we make that quality decision to accept Him as our personal Lord and Savior, then He accepts us just the way we are. But He loves us so much, He doesn't leave us that way. He begins to change us and transform us into the image of His Son, Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. The Bible says we're born again when we accept Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior. It's not enough to know about Jesus Christ. If we really want to be sure we're going to heaven, Jesus said no one will uh, see the kingdom of heaven or enter the kingdom of heaven except he's born again. And the only way a person is born again is by surrendering to Jesus as personal Lord and Savior and inviting him into their hearts. That's the only way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus has done the hard part. He's the one who took our place, took the judgment for our sins on the cross. And so uh, this is not about, uh, Jesus didn't come to establish a new religion on the earth. Jesus was a, a Jewish man in his humanity uh, he already had a religion. <laughs> he, he, he came to give us a relationship with God through His Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> That's what He came for. And He came for every person on this earth, and all He requires is that repentance and turning to Him and accepting Him as personal Lord and Savior. He's done the hard part. He suffered on the cross for us. And I just want to ask everyone here to bow your heads and close your eyes, look into your heart, and ask yourself this question. If I were to die today, am I sure I would go to heaven? Am I sure I've been born again? Am I sure I've surrendered my heart to Jesus and invited Him into my heart to be my personal Lord and Savior? And if you're saying to yourself, to be honest with God and myself, I, I can't really, I, I haven't, I don't believe I've really invited him into my heart. I'm not sure I'm born again. I really haven't seen changes in my life that I should have seen. I'm, I'm not sure I would go to heaven if I were to die today. I need prayer. Pray for me. If that's you, I want you to lift your hand up high wherever you are, and then you can put it back down. Just lift your hand up high. 
then you can put it back down. God bless you. Those watching by internet, wherever you are, just lift your hand up high. God sees your hand wherever you are. Once again, if you're saying, you know, I want to be sure that uh, I know God. The only way to know Him is through His Son, Jesus. I want a personal relationship with God the Father through His Son, Jesus. If that's what you want, I want you to lift your hand up high and you can put it back down. Secondly, if you're here or watching by internet and you're saying, you know, I know I've made that surrender to Jesus at a time past in my life, but I believe I've gotten off track with the Lord and I want to make a fresh dedication of my life to Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. If you'd like to do that, and just come back to Jesus with your whole heart here this morning. I want you to lift your hand up high wherever you are. And those watching by internet, just lift your hand up high wherever you are. And then you can put it back down. Praise the Lord. Let's all stand to our feet. And I want us to say this prayer together. We did have a, a, a couple of hands raised here. We're not... Uh, uh, normally we invite people to come forward but this service you know we're just going to ask you right where you are to say this prayer there's no formula on this other than you saying it with sincerity of heart and the conviction of faith and meaning it in your heart and so it's all about faith and all about trusting in God trusting in his son Jesus for your salvation and if you do that and say this prayer really meaning it in your heart you'll be saved whether you're here or whether you're watching by internet on the other side of the earth. Let's say this together. Heavenly Father, have mercy on me, a sinner. I repent for all my sins and ask your forgiveness. Lord Jesus, I invite you into my heart. Be my personal Lord and Savior. I thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm born again. I know now I'm saved. I'm forgiven. I have a new beginning. I have a new lease on life. I'm a new creation. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Let's give Jesus a hand clap. Praise the Lord. Amen. You, you know, I feel like as you were clapping your hands, I feel like we're one of, one of that crowd saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, save now, waving those palm branches, you know. They, uh, glory to God. They were excited, weren't they? We ought to be excited about Jesus on this Palm Sunday and about the events that we're celebrating. By the way, there's going to be a blood moon. I shared this, I've shared this a couple of times in the church, but a blood moon means the total eclipse of the moon, and it's visible here uh, between 2 and 4 a.m. early Tuesday morning. So, uh, you know, this is some, some of the signs of our times. Actually, this will be the first blood moon uh, beginning on Passover, in, when Passover time in Israel. We'll have a, a, a blood moon. Then uh, during the uh, Feast of Trumpets, there will be a second a blood moon. Then the next Passover, there will be a third blood moon. And then the next Feast of Trumpets, a fourth blood moon. Also mixed in there, there's going to be a total eclipse of the sun. Uh, that's referred to as a tetrod, is what the, the Hebrews refer to that as, as a tetrod. And this will be the only tetrod that occurs in the 21st century. And in the past, whenever these tetrods have occurred, very important events have happened concerning the nation of Israel. And we are so tied to Israel here in the United States, and the church is so tied to Israel. We were grafted in. You know, the new covenant was given first to Israel, and the Gentiles were grafted in. We need to remember that. And uh, hallelujah. Let's get excited about this. And uh, The United States of America has always been a safe haven for the Jews. Uh, Christopher Columbus... Uh, sailed for America in 1492 and things really kind of began to happen in 1493. Well, there was a tetrod in 1493. Israel became a nation in 1948. There was a tetrod in 1949 as they began to, to 
uh, the government began to function. The six-day war that occurred in either 1967, 1968, 67. There, was, 67, there was a tetrod that occurred then. And we're getting ready to see, and, and Israel won that war supernaturally in six days. And we're getting ready to see a, uh, this tetrod beginning this week. The only one of the 21st century. Joel, Peter, in preaching, quoting Joel, he said, before the coming of the great mighty day of the Lord, he said the, uh, the moon will be turned to blood and the, uh, the, the sun to darkness. Uh, and so this is a sign of the coming of the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Uh, and so no one knows the day or the hour. You know, I don't know the day or the hour. And anyone that tells you they do, well, they're, they're identifying themselves as a false prophet because the Word of God says no one knows the day or the hour. But we need to look at the signs and get excited about these things. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, when Jesus comes back on that white horse at the end of the tribulation period to conquer, a conquering king, all, every uh, Jewish person on the earth will have accepted him as Messiah. And he will totally defeat the armies that have gathered against Israel. And uh, we will rule and reign with him for a thousand years here on the earth. We've got a great future. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, tell the devil he's a loser. Satan, you're a loser. Say that with me. Satan, you're a loser. Now say this. I'm a winner in Jesus Christ. I've read the end of the book. Amen. Glory to God. You may be seated. Let's give Jesus a hand clap. Amen. But you know, that victory in our personal lives, then uh, if you accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, if you're watching by internet, please click on that praise report button and let us know so we can rejoice with the angels of God in heaven. And if you accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior here this morning in the church, come up to me sometime today and let me know that you did. I just want to encourage you. Also, we have six free books in the back that I've written. I give God the glory for them. They're available to you on the table. Oh, they're underneath the fire extinguisher. We put them underneath the fire extinguisher because they're so hot they might catch on fire and we want to you know, be able to put them out. So anyway, they're there for you free to, to get as you uh, before you leave. If, and also they're free to give to friends. If you're watching by internet, we have six free books available to you. If you'll click on the free books button, we'll send you instructions on how you can get them absolutely free of charge. Uh, I want, if you need prayer for anything this morning, you know, normally we have those that need prayer come up to the front and we have a prayer partners ministry and we pray over the needs, but we're, we're wanting to got beat this rain and have this picnic, you know, <laughs> and all of you, you know how to pray. So if you need prayer for any reason, there's so many promises in the Word of God. You, you know, the, I think about, maybe you're here and your heart's broken. Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to heal the brokenhearted in Luke chapter 4. Well, that same anointing that was on Jesus is here in this church. Jesus is with us to heal the brokenhearted here this morning. So maybe you just need someone to lay hands on you and pray for the healing of a broken heart. Maybe you've been fighting oppression. Uh, Jesus still delivers the oppressed today. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Maybe you've been fighting sickness in your body. By His stripes you were healed, and we'll pray that that healing will be manifested in your body physically. Amen. Maybe, uh, you, maybe you've just been uh, fighting, uh, you've just been felt uh, uh, nervous and stressed out and all. Well, get, get someone to pray with you to encourage you. Uh, maybe you've... Uh, uh, been discouraged and just needed an encouraging word from someone. You, you know, uh, uh, there's so many promises in the Word of God that have already been paid for by the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross at Calvary. And we know that His Father accepted His sacrifice. Why? Because He is risen. Amen. Glory to God. And we'll be celebrating His resurrection uh, next Sunday, but we really celebrate it every day 
including today. So if you need prayer, I've just named some reason. Maybe, maybe someone's hurt you and you want to forgive them and you just want someone to stand with you where you say, you know, I want to forgive this person that kind of bruised me and I just want to forgive them and give them a new beginning. Well, that, there would be a person to pray with you and agree with you about that. So if you need prayer, stand to your feet. Anyone that needs prayer, don't be bashful. All of us need prayer from time to time. If you need prayer, just stand to your feet right where you are. I'm not asking you to come up front. Just stand up. I see people standing all over. Now, some of you that just feel led to, to pray, and particularly the prayer partners ministry, uh, if you would go to these that are standing and just uh, ask them what they need prayer for and then just begin to pray for them. And the rest of us, let's just stretch out our hands toward these standing and uh, let's begin to uh, believe God with them. We have a person here. Uh, Sasha, I wouldn't wonder, would you mind praying for uh, Cherie? She's standing there and uh, see if we have someone, everyone being prayed for. Uh, we need, uh, let's see, Ava, are you standing? Okay, Anita's praying for you. Okay, I see Joe's back there praying. Brandon, very good. You feel, any of the rest of you feel led to, uh, whether you're in the prayer partners ministry or not, if you feel led to go to some of these and just be in agreement, lay hands on them and take part in that prayer, you're welcome to. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for these blood-bought promises that we have in your word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for blessing each and every one of these. Praise God. While they're praying, I just got a word of knowledge from the Holy Spirit that there's either someone here watching by internet and uh, it's, you're fighting, a, a, it it's with, concerns your eyes, but it's not eyesight. It concerns an irritation type of thing uh, in your eyes that you've been uh, struggling with. And the Lord wants to touch you and heal you. If that's you, would you stand, if you're here, would you stand to your feet? Anyone that's been fighting an irritation type, I see. Okay, see. Uh, anyone else? Did anyone else stand short for that? Okay, let's pray for Vernon. Let's just stretch out your hands toward him. Lord, I thank you for, just place your hands on your eyes, Brother Vernon. And Lord, I just thank you for just a touching and healing, taking that irritation away in the name of Jesus. Lord, you knew this need. You revealed it by the Holy Spirit. And I thank you that that healing power that was paid for by the stripes of Jesus being manifested in Vernon's eyes right now in the name of Jesus. We give you glory, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. If you were watching by internet and you were saying, well, I've got that condition, we just say, be, just put your hands over your eyes and we just say, be whole in the name of Jesus. Irritation, go in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Someone, I just got another. I'm just going to obey the Holy Spirit. Another word of knowledge. Someone, uh, I just heard this up in my spirit. Someone saying, I need to forgive my sister. That's what I heard. In my, I need to forgive my sister. Uh, uh, you know, I don't want you to have to stand to your feet for this, but if that's you, I just want you right now just to uh, speak in your heart saying, I forgive my sister in Jesus' name. And I'm telling you, if you'll just believe that, the Lord says that you have done it. The Lord says you've done it because of His blood. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's stand to our feet. Thank you so much for being here. We have food. Now we're going to be serving the food in the uh, youth building. And we just ask God to bless it right now. And we pray that uh, uh, that... Uh, Food will bring nourishment 
and divine health to all of us here as we uh, eat it. It's blessed by the Lord and the beverages as well. And we're going to have games to play. And uh, uh, we just uh, thank you, Lord, for this time of fellowship together in you. In Jesus' name, amen. And I just want to encourage you before we dismiss, next uh, Sunday we're having a, a special uh, communion service where we partake of the Lord's Supper Wednesday night during this special week. And then uh, in our Easter service, we're going to have a program, a children's play, a lot of special music, and uh, the, flag, the Flags of Glory will be doing a presentation, just a lot of wonderful things. It'll be a great time to invite people to church for that. People, most people want to go to church on Easter. So if you know of someone, a neighbor, that you think, well, they may not have a church to go to, invite them. Amen. God bless you. Go out and win the world for Jesus. All right, the final... Uh, Final play practice for the children's up front right now. God bless you. Win the world for Jesus. Amen.